Ready for tonight? I'm as ready as a person can be. After the fight, we're all coming back here for the champ's victory party. Don't be late. Minister Malcolm X. Good news, the chariot is coming. You know I'm the greatest. That's right. Jim Brown takes the ball. Your record is going to stand the test of time. How's everybody feeling tonight? We're all together, yeah. So the idea came from the fact that I found out that four guys who I considered my heroes were all hanging out together on like the most pivotal night of one of their lives, which was when Cassius beat Sonny Liston, he did go back to Malcolm's room with Jim and Sam. And the next day, the next morning is when he announced that he was in the nation of Islam. So that foundation was enough. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like I knew Ali and Malcolm were friends, but what the hell was Sam Cooke doing there? You know, and, and like Jim Brown, it just, my imagination went wild, just wishing that I could have been a fly on the wall. So yeah. in, in terms of thinking about something theatrical to write about, nothing, it felt perfect. Like what if, what if I give people an opportunity to be a fly on the wall for this conversation that they, mm -hmm. under normal circumstances, they'd never get a chance to be privy to. The champion of the world. Hey champ, you don't suppose you could sign an autograph? Yeah, of course, man. One of the interesting, unusual things about this is, as you know, usually when you're making a film, you kind of have an opportunity to do test screenings and bring people together and show your work. But because of COVID, we kind of finished the film in a vacuum. You know, like I remember being there at like the final mix and it's like, okay, Venice is in a week. And you're good. You realize that Venice was your test screening. Like no one's seen the movie you've been working on. And it's, it's kind of terrifying. Give him an autograph, Jim. Actually, Mr. Cook. <laughs> oh, sure thing, brother. The play had, um, the play was, while popular, got very mixed receptions in many of the places that it went um, and was, um, you know, cr criticized in, in many ways that I felt were kind of unfair and kind of made me wonder, like, is this more the, the you know, what would it be like if a wider audience got an opportunity to see it? I think it's about time to party. Tonight is a chance for us to reflect. You mean no one else is coming? Look, I, I'm always going to write live theater, no matter how much I write and film and tell. Live theater is a part of my life. It's why I'm here. And like, you know, just the most recent thing I did was a COVID safe reading at the Kirk Douglas Theater here in Los, Los Angeles a month ago. So I'm actually, um, it's a part of who I am because there's no substitute for the experience of putting your play in front of, putting a play up on stage in front of a live audience. There's no substitute for the experience, I would think, for an actor of mm -hmm. you know, working a play, knowing your, your, the whole work and being able to do it. I mean, the way One Night in Miami was written as a play is it's a one act, you know? And, and I always used to laugh when we would always usually cast the Jim Brown character first and in the play, Jim Brown is the only character who never leaves the room, which means that they never get a break. There's like, they, they, they get to spend 90 minutes going <laughs> for the whole play. And it, it, it both feels cruel, but it also feels like a point of pride for the actors who have to do these parts and kind of debate and, 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 and hash this out. And then having the audience be a part of it, there's the, the endorphin rush one gets as a creative. It's very different than what you get with film and television because I'm disconnected. I'm sitting on my computer or sitting at home and um, I, don't, I don't know how audiences are reacting until people tell me. Whereas in the theater, you know when you're dying in a theater. It's, it's pretty damn evident before the curtain even goes. <laughs> yeah. And then, so were you, sort of, when you were coming to the screenplay then, were there bits that you knew you wanted to tinker with or did you have those impulses or did you really just throw everything out the window and say, look, different medium, let's go from scratch? Yes, I threw it out the window and said, let's go from scratch. Um, I knew it was thematically going to be the similar and that it still would be about the private conversation. But the story, I figured that out. I had to start over a bit because certain things just wouldn't work. I, I mean, in the play, the big revelation is that Malcolm's guard, Kareem, is actually his jailer. Like, that's a revelation in the play that just really didn't work at all for, for envisioning it as a film. So I kind of started over and um, using, I, first it was, it was gratifying because the play being real time and only in the room, you don't get to know much, or you don't get to see anything else about these men leading up to that night. Whereas the film gave me an opportunity 
to show just why that year was such a crucible year in the lives of each of the four men and what they were going through, at least a taste of what they were going through before um, um, that night. And there were just so many other things, the depths to which I was able to go, particularly with um, Malcolm X's character, um, mm -hmm. that were just things that I wasn't able to do in, in the stage play. There, there are certain films that I've really enjoyed watching where you, you have this great kind of storytelling while you see it. And it was so great to be able to bring that into this story, um, which of course is just something we were able to, to do in the film and, and recreate that, that experience at the Boston show. And also the, there's a moment between Jim and Malcolm at the table after Sam and Cassius have run off and then, and then Jim kind of talks to Malcolm about being light-skinned and they have this very quiet, private conversation. Um, that, a different version of that was in the play, but in the play, it was a very comedic moment. Um, okay. and, and I love the fact that the way we did it in the film, it's actually a very powerful, emotional, dramatic moment. So to see the same idea tackled comedically, but then reimagine that moment as a more dramatic moment was really, and have it work, at least in my mind, I thought it worked, was very, very satisfying. Whoa, well, this is off to a hopping start. <laughs> you all are a bright and shining future. You know, we wrapped principal photography on One Night in Miami about a week before New Orleans shut down. And we had to do two pickup days and it took us several months to get the COVID state to be clear enough. And we were one of the first productions to kind of ramp back up to do those two pickup days, which were pivotal. They were pivotal mm -hmm. um, scenes for the film. One of them was the one um, with Sam and Cassius in his Ferrari outside the liquor store. Oh yeah. Yeah, we did that in Long Beach. So we had to redress like the whole street. Um, and the other one was Sam and his wife in the hotel room. So we did that on a stage. And we, so like we had to get those scenes and similarly, with Soul, we locked down seven weeks before we finished the film. So we still had to animate about 45% of the movie. And so the fact that they got done, both of them, is just kind of a miracle. We want the world. Speak now. But we're safe to be ourselves. Speak now. I told them. I told them. As important, as famous as these guys were, and as much as they did, I thought it was so tragic to, th to not think about like, Imagine how much more they could have done if weeks later, Ali and Malcolm didn't have a falling out. If, if months later, Sam wasn't dead, you know, when if a year later, Malcolm didn't die. Imagine how much further these four extraordinary men could have propelled one another. Um, and so the play was a tragedy in that way. And it ends on a very tragic note of Malcolm alone singing while he's like being set upon. The film, I wanted to end on a hopeful note. Um, and, and I think that was really key. The film, we end literally on Sam Cooke's performance, um, seeing that Malcolm's impact has inspired him to do something that we know is going to bring about change and inspire a movement, even though we still know that Sam is gonna be dead and that Malcolm's gonna be dead and we say it, I feel like it ends on a note of hope. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that was something emotionally that was, I think, a major difference between the play and the film.